Happy Saturday, Dolphins fans. Hopefully everyone's having a good weekend. I would be doing better if this man traded for Jonathan Allen. And is that something Chris Greer has on his mind as we get further and further into the NFL offseason? There was a lot of rumors out there a couple of days ago about Allen potentially being traded from Washington to Miami and I want to talk about the fit how it would happen and what a trade package would look like but first make sure you follow us over at social media and us really just me but we did launch a, an Instagram for the channel at Dolphins Today IG we are at 210 followers the goal is to get to a thousand before the season kicks off in September so give us a follow over there but also follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore roll off I am inching closer and closer to thousands of or not subscribers, but followers. So go help me out and go give me a follow if you want more Dolphins coverage. Right, let's start the conversation on Jonathan Allen because, well, I would like to add another defensive lineman to this room. And Allen would be one of the best guys available, obviously in the trade market, as well as free agency. You lost Christian Wilkins in free agency, which is never a good thing. And you replaced him by signing Tier Tart. Um, and you're hoping Zach Sealer will try to really get upgraded in this room. He was paired alongside Christian Wilkins a year ago. Now he's the main man in this defensive line room. And it's very possible that Miami goes to more of an edge slash DN type scheme with Anthony Weaver, and they're running a lot more of Shaq Barrett, Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and Chop Robinson, and not as much as the interior guys. But if you want to get out there and have a proficient run stopper, do we trust Zach Sealer to get that job done? done. I'm a fan of T.R. Tart, but obviously losing Wilkins as one of the best interior defensive linemen in the NFL is always going to hurt. And this rumor was kind of started, listen, I'm not going to say it's the most untrustworthy thing, but I'm also not going to come out and say it's the most trustworthy thing either. The Lockdown Commanders podcast put out a report slash rumor that the Dolphins and Commanders have talked on a trade about Jonathan Allen. He did go out and clarify that it's not anything imminent or anything that might even happen, but there was at least a conversation according to his sources. And I'd be very intrigued if this was actually correct because Allen would be a fantastic Christian Wilkins replacement on that interior defensive line. And you would once again have a very solid one-two punch on the interior with Jonathan Allen and Zach Sealer like you did last year with Wilkins and Sealer. Make sure you are getting in the comment section and letting me know what you would do if you are Chris Greer. Should Miami trade for Jonathan Allen? Type Y for yes or type N for no. He's an intriguing player. He's had a lot of success in the league, so let me know what you would do. He has been pretty solid over his career in Washington, the former Alabama Crimson Tide member. Um, it's been a little up and down at times. Obviously, the best season of the last four came in 2021, where he played in all 17 games and had nine sacks alongside 30 QB hits. Dominant season rushing the pass from the interior. But as you see, it's gone down a little bit hill, and he had a tough 2020. And But the reason why Allen is intriguing to me is because he is someone that can get pressure from the middle of that defensive line. And quarterbacks have always said that it is the most difficult pressure to face because you are not able to step up in the pocket. You are flushed out to the outside, whether it be to the left, to the right. And that's where those athletic edge rushers, specifically that Miami has, could chase down a quarterback on the move. So interior pressure is always disruptive. And you saw it last year with Christian Wilkins. Now... I'm not going to come up here and act like he would give you the same productivity as Christian Wilkins. He did decline a little bit last year. You saw the statistics on screen just a second ago, but that isn't the only place and situation where he declined. And we've often talked about pro football focus, and they do a good job of grading out players on the interior defensive line, on the back end, on the offensive line. They do a good job, but it's not the gospel. But if you did look at what they graded Jonathan Allen out last year as, it is not pretty. In 2022, he had an overall grade of 80.1 with a pass rush of 81.1, and then pairing that up with 30 QB hurries, 66 rush defense, and 59.2 tackle. And every single category went down in 2023. Outside of QB hurries, he did the exact same thing. But you saw the overall grade go down. The pass rush went down. And this is where the biggest hit came, is in the run defense. Damn near 29 grade down. And the tackling grade wasn't that good either. So my question is, and... This is where we're going to have to shift the conversation is, is that a product of him 
getting older and declining as he has been in the league for more than five, six years now? Or is it because the commanders traded away Chase Young and Montez Sweat? Two guys that have been disruptive alongside Allen on the commander's defensive line in the past, but they got dealt. One going to San Francisco and Chase Young, and the other in Montez Sweat going to Chicago. And when those two leave the defensive line, well, then the offensive line can game plan specifically for Jonathan Allen and making sure he doesn't wreck the game for them. So if they're honing in on him and not allowing him to see single coverage, if you will, and one blocker rather than he's getting double teamed every time. Maybe that is why his numbers went down, not actually because he's declining. It's because he just saw more bodies on him from the opposing offensive line, which he obviously wouldn't face in Miami because of how good the edge rushers and pass rushers they already have are. More to talk about surrounding Jonathan Allen, but make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we are going to cover everything surrounding the Miami Dolphins on a 365-day basis. For agency, we had you covered. Draft, we have you covered. We're going to have you covered throughout the offseason into training camp and the preseason, then, of course, in the regular season as well. So hit that sub button as we get closer and closer to Dolphins football. Now, any conversation had on a Jonathan Allen trade would have to be post-June 1st, and that is the only way that a trade with Allen could possibly take place. Why, you ask? Well, the Dolphins need the $18.1 million coming off the books post-June 1st. If you don't know where that money's coming from, let me refresh your memory. Xavier Howard was cut by the Dolphins slash release on a post-June 1st designation, which allows them to get that much money that you see on screen back into the cap space once that date passes. So you're getting $18 million in just a few short weeks as you only have about $1 million in cap space right now. So you jump up to 19 and 20. And that is big time because if you look at Jonathan Allen's contract and his cash breakdown, you would be able to afford his contract after June 1st. And this is just base salary and cash owed. The cap hit if he stays on the commanders is much more, but if he gets traded to Miami, this is what you'd have to really focus on. It's only $14 million in 2024 and $14.5 million in 2025, bringing it up to about $29 million in total over the next two seasons before he's an unrestricted free agent in 2026. And when you talk about Jonathan Allen, and yes, I've talked about how he has declined a little bit and his PFF numbers have gone down. But for a player of his caliber and what he's done in his NFL career for the Washington Commanders, that is relatively affordable, and it's a trade that I would be willing to make, assuming that the Commanders don't ask for an arm and a leg. That's a really good price for that type of player that can make a difference on the interior when you pair him up with Bradley Chubb, Phillips, Chop, and Shaq Barrett. So what would a trade look like? I think this is what it would look like, and the framework of deal would be very similar to this. I talked with our commander's host, Jack Sperry, and I said, listen, what can we offer you for Jonathan Allen? He said third-round pick. Well, I said, bad news. You don't have a third-round pick. You traded up for Jalen Wright. But I think a fourth and a seventh round in this upcoming draft would be very Fair. You trade one round later. Miami has two seventh round picks in this upcoming draft, at least as of right now, their own and one from Chicago. If you don't remember where they got that pick, they got it in the pick swap they made for Chase Claypool last season, which obviously didn't pan out at all. They got Claypool in a seventh for a sixth. But a fourth and a seventh, I think, is very fair for Jonathan Allen. But do you agree with me? Would you make this trade with the Washington Commanders to acquire the defensive tackle in Washington? Type A for accept or type D for decline. I think it's very fair. Let me know what y'all think down below. I am making this trade for Jonathan Allen because he is a disruptive man from the interior, and you only give up a fourth and a seventh. And I know a lot of people might say two picks. That's not very nice. I don't want to do that. But remember this, folks. You are getting two third-round picks in 2025 when you factor in comp, comp picks, right? Why are they getting that? Well, Christian Wilkins, who we've talked about leaving, he left in free agency and got $110 million from the Raiders, so you're getting a third-round comp pick for that. You're also getting another third-round comp pick for Robert Hunt leaving in free agency, the right guard going over to Carolina, getting a five-year $100 million deal. So you're getting two extra third-round picks, which is why I was okay trading the third-round pick in 2025 to move up for Jalen Wright because you knew you are getting two back. And if you trade a fourth and a seventh, that pretty much has the same value as a third-round pick, you're only really losing a fourth because 
you still have a seventh on the back end, and then you're getting two third rounders as well. So you'd still have multiple picks on day two as well as multiple picks on day three. I think the comp is fair to get a player of his caliber that would make this type of difference on this Dolphins defense led by Anthony Weaver. I'm all in. We can continue the conversation over on social media. My DMs are open, whether you hit me up on Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff. Like I said, shoot me a follow. We're inching closer to 1,000. And the DMs are open on the Dolphins Today IG as well, so it's another way to communicate with me. I am not afraid to answer any questions or any comments you guys have. So go give us a follow on Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff and at Instagram at Dolphins Today IG. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. Go Fins.